We're here with FX President and General Manager, John Landgraf. First of all, congratulations on your new position. Thank you, Tom. Good, good. So how does this change uh, what you're doing over at FX, if, if at all? You know, it just gets more complicated. It seems like everything in our business gets more complicated year after year. You know, now in addition to FX and the Fox Movie Channel, you know, we have FX HD, and now we're, we're making a major push on our own website. It'll have full ad serving, and, um, you know, we'll be streaming you know, all of our programming on that site, and we'll be producing original content, both shoulder programming that's related to all of our original series, but also new original series that'll basically premiere on our website only. So, like with everybody else, you know, same job, just 20% harder. Yeah, exactly. Well, FX over the years has been known as probably the preeminent area for new scripted series, uh, even surpassing HBO in some experts' eyes. How have you been able to keep that momentum going over the number of series that you've been, you've been releasing? You know, I, think, I think it's both good fortune. You know, FX really found, I think, an extraordinarily successful business and creative model by saying, well, you know, there's, there's pay television's premium scripted programming, that's HBO and increasingly Showtime. We're going to be commercial supported television, basic cables, premium scripted content. And we really define a niche. You know, we were fortunate enough that we had three big successful shows with The Shield, Nip Tuck, and Rescue Me right in succession. And then talent just decided that we were the place to be. So we become a magnet, we get a lot of options, we, we pick the best we can. And, and now we've kind of been able to aggregate that success into a whole brand. Um, where we really have a, a philosophy about process, a philosophy about where we want to be creatively. So kind of have a North Star that we follow, and we've been fortunate enough to follow it for quite some time now. Good. Good. What are some of the shows upcoming that uh, we should keep an eye on? Well, I mean, uh, starting in September, seventh season of The Shield, one of my personal favorites, going to be fantastic. New scripted drama called Sons of Anarchy, which is about a motorcycle club. I think Easy Rider meets The Sopranos, say. It's a familial saga, a crime drama set in Northern California. I think that's going to be a show that's going to really appeal to the S.H.I.E.L.D. fans. It's always setting in Philadelphia. We'll be returning in September, and we're piloting about four or five comedies right now and hoping to pick a companion comedy that we can put on at 10.30 after Sunny this fall. And then we'll come right back with Nip Tuck in January, Damages Season 2 in January, and we're making a 22-episode season of Rescue Me, which will start in the spring. So it's a 52-week-a-year round process now, and uh, we're fortunate. We're grateful we have so much good programming. What are some of the issues facing programmers coming into the show? Well, you know, I mean, we come here basically because it's where we can get a lot of work done in terms of our relationship with the operators. You know, Comcast, Time Warner, the major cable operators, Cox, you know, DirecTV and, uh, and uh, you know, Echostar here. Telcos are becoming more and more important in that regard, too. But ultimately, this is cable. And, you know, we're here for the cable operator. And, uh, you know, I'll be meeting with Comcast and Time Warner today. And, you know, they're, they're, they're expanding their services. You know, VOD is becoming more important to them. Their broadband services are becoming more important to them. So for us, to be a full-service provider of content gets more complicated in terms of rights. That's one of the reasons that we've gone into the ownership business. So FX Productions, which I also run, you know, wholly owns and produces It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and co-owns damages and co-owns something in of anarchy and riches and dirt. And because part of what we're trying to do is, you know, basically acquire all the rights we need, not just for our linear channel, but to service the ambitions of Time Warner and Comcast and our cable partners and give them everything they need. Uh, we're here in New Orleans, first time since the Katrina uh, disaster. Any thoughts on, on cable's impact coming to New Orleans? You know, we actually have, have shot two shows since Katrina. We were the first production company into Louisiana after Katrina. We unfortunately had shot the pilot to Thief in, in New Orleans, and we weren't able to shoot the series in New Orleans because of all the damage to the infrastructure, but we kept it in Louisiana. We, you know, we moved uh, over to Baton, Baton Rouge, but we shot it here. And then subsequent to that, we also shot the pilot to the riches here. So, you know, we've been down, it seems like I've been in New Orleans a lot because we've been shooting a lot of shows down here. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, there's tax incentives in Louisiana, but I, I know with Thief, we felt really strongly about keeping it here because we just felt the economy was on its back. We needed whatever infusion of cash, you know, anybody could bring to it. Good, good. Um, and in general, anything that I missed that you may want to add regarding FX or any of the, the shows? No, the one thing I'll say is, I mean, we're known for our original programming, but, but we focus very heavily on our acquisition strategy of late, too. 
You know, we bought two and a half men, which will be coming to the channel in late 2009. It's the number one show in broadcast syndication. So we feel really good about that acquisition. And we stepped up and bought a lot of, you know, very impressive movie titles. We bought a major output deal from Universal, a major output deal from Sony. We bought the Marvel output deal, including Iron Man and Iron Man 2. And we buy, you know, 90% of what comes out of Fox. So, you know, I think what you're going to see with the channel is we're going to maintain caliber of our dramas, we're going to increase the number of comedies, and then I think you'll see a major step up in ratings when some of these uh, acquisitions start coming on the channel in 2009 and beyond. Sounds good.